Welcome to Philly Metro Commercial Real Estate. My name is Pete Gustis. Philly Commercial Real Estate is a website and YouTube channel to help people learn how to deal with multi-tenant properties, including strip malls, commercial multi-tenant, residential multi-tenant rentals, and other commercial properties in industrial space. Again, my name is Pete Gustis. I've been a licensed realtor for 15 years as of 2021. I've sold many multi-units, land for development for both residential and commercial uses, liquor licenses, restaurants, businesses, warehouses, industrial properties. Today I want to explain the importance of understanding how to evaluate commercial multi-tenant rental properties. The reason you want to know this is, first of all, to understand what your property is worth based on cash flow. You also want to be competitive in your market to potentially understand if you can increase your rents without losing tenants. You also would be able to understand if you're collecting the rents that you're supposed to. Believe it or not, sometimes if you have a property manager, you could be missing out or if your accounting's not so great, maybe you're not collecting all the rents that you're supposed to. And you can also see where you're losing money, such as having higher than normal expenses. And this does happen with a lot of multi-units and commercial properties. I've actually had commercial clients who haven't thought they had any problems. And then after a while, you talk to them and they realize that they actually do have unexpected higher costs. And they, you, it can save you money by identifying those. You can also find ways to improve the value of your property. So this is what a real estate expert can do for you. My experience with commercial real estate is by being the past president of the Commercial Industrial Council. I've also been a member of the Commercial Industrial Investment Council at Chester County. I am a certified master planner with Albright University and I'm a certified real estate investment planning specialist I'm a member of the National Commercial Real Estate Association and the top 1% of all realtors in the United States. I'm a marketing expert. My experience actually started in sales and marketing and I shifted into real estate. That's one thing that makes me different from other real estate agents uh, or commercial realtors. So if you need help and you want to hire someone in the Philly metro area, give me a call. It's Pete at 610-209. 9219 and if you need help somewhere else let me know I'll see if I can find an expert to help you this video is going to show you how to evaluate a commercial multi-unit property so check it out so here we have 1400 Callow Hill Street in Philadelphia this is a fictional property just for the point of showing you how the evaluation works and explaining a couple things of course, evaluating your property is very important. It helps you determine, one, the value of the property, two, a price that you could sell it for realistically in the current market, uh, three, it also helps you identify problems that you have in your property. You might not be collecting the amount of money you're expecting, and four, it shows you ways that you can improve your property. So there are some very important things that you can look at when you do an evaluation like this. Um, other things that you can do that could be important would be a rent survey, which we're not going to go over right now, but that also helps you determine some very important things. So if you're looking for this type of information, definitely want to give me a call, 610-209-9219. So let's go over this evaluation. Uh, let's look at how this works. First of all, this is your property information. And then, of course, you put your rentable square feet, number of units, year built, actual age, effective age. An effective age is an approximation of how old your property is based on its current condition. So if it's been repaired recently, everything's nicer and new, you have a newer effective age. <clears throat> total number of units, we have 50 units, 75 parking spots, 125 total. It's in very good condition. <clears throat> and you just fill out all this information what the owner pays for what tenants pay for how it's heated age of the roof age of windows does it have a garage now the, the expected sale price for this property is 13.5 million and then basically we have your loan amount um, this is a, assumed it 
25% down. The main reason that is like that right now is pre-coronavirus, a lot of banks were doing loans with 10% down. Now with the coronavirus, most banks are asking for 25% down for multi-unit investments because of the eviction moratoriums and uncertainty of them paying also, tenants I should say. So this allows you to calculate a loan. Um, so if you did put down your 25%, your payments would be 65,235 a month, 12 payments a year, 6% interest, 25 year loan. Basic information that we would need from you is on these sections here. That would be the number of units, identifying the units. So there's one bedrooms, 10 of them, 1,550 a month. Your annual rent is shown here. That's calculated automatically. Two bedrooms, 20 units, 1,975 a month. Your annual rent is calculated automatically. Three bedrooms, 20 units, 2,300 a month. Your annual rent is collect, conducted automatically. Garages, 75, 125 per garage, and that calculates that. This gives you a total gross potential rental income of 1,324,500. Now here I put a vacancy or credit loss of 5%. Lots of times when I talk to people, they say my place has been fully occupied you know, for years, I don't have a problem, or you know, maybe it's one or two or vacant every once in a while until I can get a tenant in. The one thing you have to keep in mind is that typically a bank will not allow zero. They usually want, at this point, most banks are asking for a 5% minimum when they calculate a value of a property. Um, last time we had a market crash, most of the banks were ask, asking about 15%. So that means if you actually had 10% vacant, they would add 15% to that number. And the banks do that to protect their clients and themselves because they don't want to default on a loan. So keep in mind, that's why this 5% is calculated here. This gives you a gross operating income, 1,258,275. Uh, now we're going to input numbers that we get from your information, your taxes, property taxes, personal if you have it, property insurance, maintenance, if you have a ma management or somebody who collects rent or anything like that. Um, if there's a separate charge for repairs that you did, we're just assuming that they just did a bunch of repairs and have none. But if you have repairs, and I understand uh, the other. So the question on repairs typically is, this is not a consistent number, so I don't wanna put anything in. Well, you do have to put something in. You can put an average if you'd like, I understand last year you might have had 10,000. This year you had 2,000. So you could always put down, you know, 6,000 if that's going to suffice. People are going to look at the last three years tax returns anyways, typically. Most of the times they're going to ask for it. Um, any phone bill, gas, electric, water, sewage, legal, permits, trash, lawn care, everything separated here to calculate values. Once you have your expenses put in, you have your total operating expense. So for this example, it's 344,478. Now that calculates your net operating income. That would be your gross operating income minus your total operating expense is your net operating income. So then we calculate your debt service. That's your loan amount. We calculate this loan amount here, they add the payments, and that is subtracted from your net operating income. This is your cash flow before taxes. So there, there we go here. And what this calculates is this building is a 6.8% cap rate. If we wanted this to be 7%, this actually can automatically calculate that. And the reason why that's important is because when you're looking at this, you have to determine for a potential buyer often, they're looking for certain numbers that make sense for them. If the numbers don't make sense, they will not buy the property. So this allows you to easily be able to calculate a sale price so you can market this correctly to a buyer.
or in other words, explain it correctly to a buyer so they know how much money they're going to be making. Uh, once again, I want to explain some important things. Once you have this figured out, it also makes it easy for you to look at this and hopefully identify problems. Um, if you all of a sudden are looking at this and say, wow, every year I have forty-five to $50,000 in repairs, you may start want to look at your repairs and say, why are they so high all the time? Um, I understand this is a fictional 50 unit, but still having $50,000 in repairs consistently can be bad. I know for a fact that I've talked to people who've owned multi-units and other similar things, and I've talked to them and they said, well, it's amazing how things keep breaking. And, you know, I, I understand it can happen sometimes, don't get me wrong, but when you're looking at it, um, there's other things like your utility costs and you can analyze those. You might determine your gas bills or your water bills are too high. That could be tenant issues if they have leaking faucets and toilets that are not being repaired um, and that can cause losses for you. So all these types of things are important and doing an analysis like this helps you identify problems and that's why it's important. As you can see, it's very simple to understand what commercial multi-tenant properties are worth, how to identify problems, and how to increase the value. Once you have all the facts, other things can be done like rent surveys to help you determine where you stand with other competing rental properties like yours. With the eviction moratorium ending March 31st, 2021, and the news that the government plans to expand them even further into the summer or even the fall of 2021. It's important to understand how they work. The news is also stating that they may put these eviction moratoriums on commercial real estate also. So if you're a commercial property owner, you still might not be safe. You may not be able to evict the business that has been unable to pay. I understand it's a bad thing, but keep in mind 10 to 25% of all business are having difficulties and many have already gone out of business. So with those leases and those mortgages at play, it's important to understand what's going on. So if you're looking for information like this, look no further, subscribe to Philly Commercial Real Estate. Call me if you need help. It's Pete at 610-209-9219. I look forward to helping you soon and have a great day.